Canto 22, Circle 8, Bullia 5, The Grafters. I have seen horsemen breaking camp. I have seen the beginning of the assault, the march and muster, and at times the retreat and riot. I have been where chargers trampled your land. O oh, Arentines, I have seen columns of foragers, shocks of tourney, and running of tilts. I have seen the endless lines march to bells, drums, trumpets, from afar and near. I have seen them march on signals from a castle. I have seen them march with native and foreign gear. But never yet have I seen horse or foot, nor ship in range of land, nor sight of star take its direction from so low a toot. We went with the ten fiends, ah, savage crew, but in church with saints, with stew pots in the tavern, as the old proverb wisely bids us do, all my attention was fixed upon the pitch to observe the people who were boiling in it and the customs and the punishments of that ditch. As dolphins surface and begin to flip their arched backs from the sea, warning the sailors to fall to and begin to secure ship, so now and then some soul, to ease his pain, showed us a glimpse of his back above the pitch, and quick as lightning disappeared again. And as, at the edge of a ditch, frogs squat about, hiding their feet and bodies in the water, leaving only their muzzles sticking out, so stood the sinners in that dismal ditch. But as Curlybeard approached, only a ripple showed where they had ducked back into the pitch. I saw the dread of it, as haunts me to this day. One linger a bit too long, as it sometimes happens, the frog remains when another spurts away, and Catclaw, who was nearest, ran a hook through the sinner's pitchy hair and hauled him in. He looked like an otter dripping from the brook. I knew the names of all the fiends by then. I had made a note of them at their first at the first muster, and marching and listening and check them over again. Hey, Crazy Red, the crew of demons cried all together. Give him a taste of your claws. Dig him open a little. Off with his hide. And I then, Master, can you find out please the name and history of that luckless one who has fallen into the hands of his enemies? My guide approached that wraith from the hot tar and asked him whence he came. The wretch replied, I was born and raised in the kingdom of Navarre. My mother placed me in service to a knight, for she had borne me to a squanderer who killed himself when he ran through his birthright. Then I became a domestic in the service of good King Tybalt. There I began to graft, and I account for it in this hot crevice. And Pigtusk, who at the ends of his lower lip shot forth two teeth more terrible than a boar's, made the wretch feel how one of them could rip. The mouse had come among the cats, but here Curlybeard locked arms around him, crying, while I've got hold of him, the rest stand clear. And turning his face to my guide, if you want to ask him anything else, he added, ask away before the others tear him limb from limb. And my guide to the sinner, I should like to know if among the other souls beneath the pitch are any Italians. And the wretch, just now I left a shade who became who came from parts nearby. Would I were still in the pitch with him, for then these hooks would not be giving me cause to cry. And suddenly, Grafter bellowed in great heat, We've stood enough! And he hooked the sinner's arm, and raking it, ripped off a chunk of meat. Then Dragontooth wanted to play, too, reaching down for a catch at the sinner's legs. But Curlybeard wheeled round and round with a terrifying frown. And when the fiends had somewhat given ground, they calmed a little. My guide, without delay, asked the wretch who was staring at his wound, Who was the sinner from who you say you made your evil starred departure to come ashore among these fiends? And the wretch, it was the shade of Friar Gomita of Galura, and the crooked stem of every fraud. When his master's enemies were in his hands, he won high praise from them. He took their money, 
without cease or dock it, and let them go. He was, in all his dealings, no petty burser, but a kingly pocket. With him, his endless crony in the fosse is Don Miquel Zanchi of Logodoro. They babble about Sardinia without pause, but look, see that fiend grinning at your side? There is much more that I should like to tell you, but oh, I think he means to grate my hide. But there grim sergeant wheeled, sensing foul play, and turning on Cramper, who seemed set to strike, ordered, Clear off, you buzzard, clear off, I say. If either of you would like to see and hear Tuscans or Lombards, the pale sinner said, I can lure them out of hiding if you stand clear, and let me sit here at the edge of the ditch, and get all these black talons out of sight, for while they're here, no one will leave the pitch. In exchange for myself, I can fish you up as pretty a mess of souls as you like. I have only to whistle the way we do when one of us gets free. Dead Dog raised his snout as he listened to him, then, shaking his head, said, Listen to the grafter spinning his tricks so he can jump from the brim. And the sticky wretch, who was all treachery, Oh, I am more than tricky when there is a chance to see my friends in greater misery. Helkin, against the will of the crew, could hold no longer. If you jump, he said to the scheming wretch, I won't come after you at a gallop, but like a hawk after a mouse. We'll clear the edge and hide behind the bank. Let's see if you're trickster enough for all of us. Reader, here is the new game. The fiends withdrew from the bank's edge, and Dead Dog, who at first was more against it, led the savage crew. The Navarres chose his moment carefully, and planting both his feet against the ground, he leaped, and in an instant he was free. The fiends were stung with shame, and of the lot Helkin most, who had been the cause of it, he leapt out madly, bellowing, You're caught! But little good it did him. Terror pressed harder than wings, the sinner drove from sight, and the fiend in full flight had to raise his breast. A duck, when the falcon dies, will disappear exactly so, all in a flash, while he returns defeated and weary up the air. Grizzly, in a rage at the sinner's flight, flew after Helkin, hoping the wraith would escape, so he might find an excuse to start a fight. And as soon as the grafter sank below the pitch, Grizzly turned his talons against Helkin, locked with him claw to claw above the ditch. But Helkin was sparrowhawk enough for two and clawed him well. And ripping one another, they plunged together into the hot stew. The heat broke up the brawl immediately, but their wings were smeared with pitch and they could not rise. Curly Beard upset as his company, commanded four to fly to the other coast at once with all their grapples. At top speed, the fiends divided each one to his post. Some on the near edge, some along the far, they stretched their hooks out to the clotted pair, who were already cooked deep through the scar of their first burn. And turning to one side, we slipped off, leaving them thus occupied.